Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Sam Ritchie. This week we're talking about the Indian rape case, about farm workers striking in South Africa, about domestic workers, about dockers in America and also about the 1972 building workers strike. Um, but Sam, firstly you've got an update on affiliations. Yeah, that's right, Walt, and um, we've reached an important milestone of 100 affili affiliations from different trade union branches around the world. Um, this is quite momentous for us as we've linked different campaigns together and organised workers such as the brick uh, kiln workers in India. Um, we've, these campaigns are crucial and allows workers to interact around the world and share what happened with decent working people around the world and um, using uh, our toolbox of our website and social media. Um, and we also want to say that, um, that anyone who's not affiliated um, can also start affiliating by £5 a year. That's, you can either be an individual, um, a trade union, a cooperative, a co-op um, or a national structure. Um, so it's only £5 a year and you can keep up to date with all our stories via Facebook and Twitter and our website. So just keep coming. Yeah, thank you for affiliating. It makes a difference and all money raised from affiliations goes directly to supporting trade union projects. Um, now, moving to South Africa, 2012 was a year of major industrial unrest. Uh, we saw in particular the unrest in the mining sector, which led to the Marikana massacre and uh, massive strikes across the sector. Currently, there's a huge amount of unrest in agriculture in the Western Cape, with uh, fruit and wine farms in particular being, um, being affected. Um, there was a strike for a long time. The strike has officially ended. Um, but many of the workers have gone back and been intimidated or not been allowed back onto their farms and there are fears that the strike might start again because uh, this is not the deal that the union struck. So Kasatu is considering calling for a boycott of South African fruit and wine if the situation is not resolved. Um, it's certainly something that we'll watch and keep you informed of. Um, but it comes down to there being deep structural problems with the South African economy and particular uh, sectors like mining and farming which rely on, on very, very low wages and the rising cost of living in South Africa means that this is simply not tenable anymore and there needs to be proper change to the economy so that working people get decent wages. Well, um, also, um, well, in, um, I've been invest uh, looking at the Will India change um, in terms of the uh, rape case, the uh, gang rape that happened on a bus in December. Um, the trial is started yesterday and this trial was fast-tracked by the Indian government and um, five of the six men have appeared in court. Um, the, other, the other man is under 18, so he's in a, a, a juvenile court. Um, there's been mass protests across India against what happened to the young woman on a bus. A panel has been uh, reviewing uh, in India a sex crime against women. Um, J.S. Verma, who um, is the, an ex-chief of justice in India, um, he and his team has prepared a 600-page report um, and they've gained over 80,000 um, recommendations and feedback from citizens, um, um, women's groups and institutions around the world. And this report is set out to show that the, the Indian government needs to change legislation, not just have this case as a momentous thing and nothing will be done about it because it is fast-tracked. It might come out of media, it will stop and maybe this other cases won't be reported. For example, um, last week we seen another woman attacked on a bus in India. Um, she was going to a town in um, uh, Punjab and um, she was the only passenger on a bus and where the conductor and the bus driver um, dragged her to a location and they met with five of their friends and they also attacked her. This is mm -hmm. just like disgraceful because of the mass protests. This that is actually shown that even though that there's mass protests and even though things are being done in terms of the fast tracking of the court mm -hmm. case, these attacks are still, still happening. happening. Um, and it, the laws need to change just because it's fast tracked. There mm -hmm. needs to be actual change in legislation. We need to support people around the world in doing mm -hmm. campaigns to stop this sort and of thing happening. Yeah, and we need to really do something about sexual violence against women because yep. it's reaching absolutely crisis proportions yeah. at the moment. Um, 
the militant west coast of the United States Union, the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, is facing a major showdown with multinational grain companies in the Pacific Northwest. Um, the grain companies are represented by an employer body called the Pacific Northwest Grain Handlers Association, and they manage export terminals, which handle 50% of U.S. wheat exports and about a quarter of grain exports. Essentially, the ILWU has been working without a contract as the employer body refuses to recognize the new contract, and there have been threats of lockouts. The International Transport Workers Federation has called for solidarity with these dockers, and this has been recognized by dock workers unions in other countries, uh, including the Japanese Siemens Union, who have agreed to honor the pickets on the, the West Coast. Um, the ILWU has an interesting and radical history. Um, most recently, they were involved with Occupy Oakland in uh, a strike in, in, uh, in California last year. Um, also, well, and, um, we've also been looking at the, the uh, protest which took place on January 18th, which was the International Domestic Workers Network, and they protested out the Saudi Arabian uh, consulate in Hong Kong against uh, condemning the, the young girl who was, um, who was a domestic migrant worker who was beheaded after being accused of killing a child seven years ago. Um, there was no proper investigation into this, um, so um, we, if you'd seen last week, we interviewed um, Elizabeth uh, Tang, and um, she said she was speaking about, and we can also look back at her post about that in the letter that was written. Um, IWDN demands that the Saudi Arabian government um, apologises and compensates um, Rosina Nafik's family because there was no investigation. She was also tortured and interrogated um, over, the, over this, and this is inhumane, and she was only 17, so mm -hmm. she's still a child. Um, the United Nations and the International Labour uh, Conventions uh, protect human rights and work, migrant workers for all, and this, just because she's a domestic worker doesn't mean that she should be forgotten about, mm -hmm. and we need to publicise this issue, and start campaigning against the Saudi Arabian government because mm -hmm. what they did was a I breach of human rights. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so... And finally, in 1972, there was a historic building workers' site in the UK, and that was a year when there was a lot of industrial unrest, but the building workers' strike was historic because it's a sector that was historically very difficult to organise uh, because of the fact that building sites are geographically dispersed. There are many different employers and subcontractors, and many of the workers are divided into different trades and organised into different craft unions. However, conditions were really bad, wages were low, and health and safety was terrible, and uh, many people died on the job and indeed they still do. Um, the unions got together and uh, went on strike for a decent wage increase in May 1972 and the Conservative government, the police and the construction companies essentially conspired to drum up conspiracy charges against many of the strikers and 24 of them were arrested and uh, six of them ended up in jail. Some of them were in jail for several years uh, this is something that, of course, the government would like to have forgotten, but uh, unfortunately for them, one of those jailed strikers, Ricky Tomlinson, subsequently became a famous actor and he's kept the case alive. He has been petitioning to have government information about that strike released. The government has refused and uh, there has been, and they're going, to, they're going to be covering up that information for another 10 years, citing national security. So... We don't know what the government is hiding. This is a strike that happened 40 years ago, and they are still too embarrassed by their behavior to let us know what happened. So we really need to find out what happened on that strike and quite how the conservative government colluded with construction companies. And uh, if you live in the UK and would like to put some pressure on the government, please sign the petition. Uh, we'll put a link to that petition. Please sign the petition asking for those documents to be released. Uh, that's all we have for you this week. Once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for affiliating. and. Uh, the best.